Okay, so warning, what you're about to see in this book thing is extra crazy. Um, I woke up this morning, it's like 2 o'clock, by the way. I haven't eaten since about 3 o'clock the day before. So technically it's like 24 hours of fasting and I ordered from... Oh, I ordered from five Postmates places. Well, technically four Postmates and one delivery app. But I'm so excited about this. So, yeah, it's going to be a big feast. And I'm super, super stoked. So, there'll be, this table will be filled slowly but surely as the food comes in. And I know I say I'm always on a diet, but not today. <laughs> today is my going full out and ordered all my favorite foods. I got chicken fingers, fries, pizzas, pastas. Yes, I have. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, guys. So I filmed that part like 20 minutes ago, the first part, because I'm going to start eating because this is going to get cold. I have Cinnabon. I'm going to warm Cinnabon later because that's my dessert. But Domino's, I got a bone to pick with you. I just got the phone with Domino's. Their delivery person left the warehouse. I'm on the Domino's app tracker. The warehouse. The main thing. I'm just going to start eating this because I'm starving. Um, I got this from Fred Siegel, the penny pasta. It's so good. Jason started introducing me to this, and it's amazing. Literally just penny noodles. Um, and they got it right. Yeah. They don't always. But, yeah. So, they basically... Look, this is warm. Mmm. It's actually really good. And the person's like, yeah, they had a... Unfortunately, like, unfortunately, they had a delivery before you. Um, they're having trouble with the customer. And I'm like, yeah, but... It's, a, it's over an hour, which is why I'm calling you now since he left the place. It's, like, it's going to be cold. Like, it takes 20 minutes. I'm right across the street from you guys. Like, it takes 20 minutes. I was like, yeah, well, you know, when he gets there, if it's cold, he calls back, and, you know, we'll just make him again. I'm like, I've already been waiting two hours since I placed the order for his pizza. Anyways. Oh, my gosh. They showed up with all the drinks. Literally, like, he left the place at 2.10. It's now 3.18, so, like, an hour and eight minutes later. Oh, I'm going to eat this pasta before this gets cold. Well, you know what? I should try the pizza. Because, you know, Postmates and restaurants, I expect it to be a little cold or like not as great or as fresh. Domino's is supposed to be known for their delivery. <laughs> I, I was so close to my Domino's, like like ridiculously close to my Domino's. And I'm like, this should not be happening. This is so bomb, by the way. Mm. I was so excited for my feast. <laughs> mm. I was just like something I can't stop eating. It's so good. I got drinks, but obviously I'm not going to drink all of this right now. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry that this is so mumble jumble. Postmate. Two Postmates. I can't find the drinks. I may have a Postmates pen. Just saying. Okay. This pasta is so bomb, but I'm going to just try this so I can see. So I'm trying. This is the handmade piece. The hand pot. Hand. It's not hand toss, it's like handmade pan. It's like the pan pizza. Apparently, it's like a deep dish, Domino's version of deep dish. I've never tried it. To me, off the bat, it's like something new. I'm trying Domino's. For me, off the bat, it kind of looks like and smells like Pizza Hut pizza because that's how they make all their pizzas. But it's like a thick, it's like a thicker. Mmm. This isn't bad. Have I tried this before? Handmade pan pizza. So it's like the Domino's equivalent of like deep dish. It's like. It's so warm. Which is good. But it's not like hot like when it comes fresh. And I really wanted to try this fresh and hot because it's something new I'm trying. Mm. It's good. It tastes like a breadstick to me. I think the way they bake it. So 
not that flat sort of dominoes that I love and that I'm used to, but I'm still all that. Mm. Wow, I'm putting both these in my fridge because I have a lot of food to try. I'm gonna roll really, really good. Mm. Like I said, it's still pretty warm, but so then the guy at Domino's was like, well, call us if it's cold. All of a sudden, you're another one. I'm like, that's how people's dinners work. They don't just order, like, three hours before they're hungry. They order when they're hungry. That's why they order Domino's. Otherwise, they'll get some bougie pizza place. Share a Coke with Tracy. Are there any Tracy's out there? Okay. So I'm going to share a Coke with you right now. I'm taking my antibiotic again. I feel like I'm, I'm better. So I thought I was in sick. Sometimes I have bronchitis, maybe. Um, mm. So good. Okay, we had another Postmate find its way. This is Jerry's Deli and Chicken Fingers. Super excited about. Get rid of this pasta. The butter noodles from Fred Siegel are just so freaking good. Mm. Pizza and pasta will always be the combination to beat. So good. We just got a text with the amount of tickets today. It was the day I put up the announcement video for our my and Jason's first live show in Anaheim. July 21st. We're putting together a live show. And we just announced it today, and we already got, like, I already got an update of how many tickets sold. I'm blown away. Some of you guys have tweeted me saying, like, one person bought tickets and said they're coming from Chicago. And they sent me, like, a screenshot of, like, congrats, you're going to see so-and-so on tour. That's crazy. On the first day, like, how many people... You can go run buy tickets the day it's announced. I don't even do it the day it's announced. <laughs> I always put it like on my list. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this or I know when you see about money. This is very exciting. I'm like overwhelmed. Jason's busy shooting with David today, so we haven't really been able to talk, but I'm excited. I didn't do live shows for so long because I just didn't think people would come. So the fact that people bought tickets already blows my mind, truly. And I don't say that, like, trying to be humble or relatable. Like, truly, I'm like, what? Mm. So, um, so, ever since I came back from Bore Bore, I feel like I've, like, kept my tan. But I think my legs are there. I was like, oh, I'm not tan. I'm never tan. Mm. So, so good. So, this was pretty good. I think I like the hand toss better. Handmade pan, not to be confused with hand, hand toss. Mm. Speaking of Jason, he just replied. I have my phone there. I usually flip it over so I don't get distracted during my eating shows. This is the... Brooklyn style, which I've also never tried, so I thought, oh, this would be, like, a fun, like, trying a dumb one since I've never tried or something. So this is the Brooklyn style. Oh, my gosh. So right away, I noticed that it's, like, really flat. So the handmade pan was really deep, like, the, obviously, like, a deep dish. And this is, like, really, like, flat. But I love pizza like this, too. Like, ooh. And also, I noticed there's way more grease on this than in the handmade or... Or hand toss. Mmm. Okay. Obviously now I get it why they call it Brooklyn style. It's very like New York-y. Mmm. It is like that by the slice kind of pizza you would get. It's good. It's just like... I don't think this is what you... 
want when you order Domino's. I don't think you're like getting this type of slice. Like pizza by the slice is great. Um, this must have a break because I'm just blowing up the phone. It's good. But it's like that kind of you when you're on the streets or you're actually in New York that you want to get. When I want Domino's, I want. I want Domino's. Domino's has a very distinct taste. So, also on our live show. All right, guys, that one was on quick time. It froze, and um, my last postmate arrived with the fries. <laughs> I know, this is like the most hodgepodgey. Okay, so verdict is, you know, deep dish wasn't bad. It tastes like Pizza Hut. This tastes like something you get on the streets of New York or like you can get them here in Hollywood, like Pizza by the Slice. It's fine. Hand toss is still my favorite, but it's good. I'm going to keep these. They will not go to waste. Um... These are so good. Oh my god, who knew butter pasta would even taste good delivered? I'm just like Parmesan cheese on them. So good. Ah. Mmm. I don't even know where I was. So much happening. Um. He's nice that his wife announced they're pregnant. <laughs> I don't know if it's her second. I'm pretty sure they have one together. And I know he has like a way older son. Now here's my question to you guys. And it's like, it's just a generic question. It's something I think about. It hasn't really, well, it's prompted by Casey because he has an older son. And now he's has, he's having another baby. And his son's like in college, like college age. Second families. I go back and forth with this a lot, obviously, because... I'm dating somebody with children. I really want children. So first and foremost, I'll just say, like, whatever works for your family and whatever you are comfortable with and you think is good for you, your decision, your family, with your partner, have a baby whenever you want. Any age, any time, have six families. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, and to be honest, even my dad, who's super religious and, like, doesn't believe in, like, sex before marriage and having babies out of wedlock. Even he will say, like, all um, babies are a gift from God. A lot of religious people say that. And that's not to say I'm pro-life or whatever, you know. Again, that's all I knew. I'm just saying, like, my mom, I have, I've had both sides in my life, so let me explain myself. And also, let me get into food. Ooh, I got cheese fries and Shake Shack. So, I got chicken fingers and Ghirardelli and cheese fries and Shake Shack, which I'm going to get into. So, having said this, I come from both sides. I come from my mom having me and my brother with my dad. And then five years later, she decides to have a, another baby, a second family, with another man. And that is my half sister. Callie, who I'm obsessed with and I love with. Oh my god, we're so close. Like, I, she's my real sister. Technically a half sister, but a real sister. Um, and then we have my dad, who remarried as well and actually is still married to the same woman he remarried around the same time my mother remarried. A little after. Okay. So then my dad, like I was saying, got remarried and she never had kids of her own. Um, and they just decided not to have kids. I don't really know the real reason. I don't know. Sometimes she's like, you know, I could have had kids or whatever. She tells me, I'm like, okay, well, why didn't you? And then my dad would always say, like, he didn't want to have this a second family, you know, like. So, whatever the case is, like, to have another kids with, like, a different woman, you know, having two baby mamas in his life. Um, so, and now Casey, obviously, he has first choice with someone else. But even if it wasn't, like, having a child, like, that's, like, over 18, that's, like, 21 or 22, and then having a new baby, like, that sounds exhausting for for the person, I would think. I don't know. I'm not a parent, so I'm, like, literally genuinely asking everyone else because I'm not a parent. I don't know how it is to raise kids and, you know, but is it, like, to start over? Is it, like, crazy? Um... It seems like a lot of work. You have a full adult. I don't know. Babies are a lot of work. You know, I'm around babies a lot. 
in my family. <laughs> so fun. I'm so exhausted after a weekend. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so tired. And that's just me being, you know, not the parent of the child either. <laughs> and not having to take care of them and put them down for naps and change their diapers. And I want kids, whether that's God willing one day I can have naturally. And vitro, maybe even adoption. I've talked about it before that I was like, that's not my path, but the older I get and the more I think about it, I'm like, maybe it is. Like I've been reading a lot up on adoption and parents who adopt and children who got adopted and just like, like so thankful and grateful for their adopted parents. And that they like love them as if they were their biological um, parents. And they're just like, I don't, I have no interest in finding my biological parents because they raised me so well and they're my parents. But I'm like, oh, but to have my own genetics and be a little me. <laughs> I'm so narcissistic. I'd be like, oh my god, I want a little me. Dating someone with kids, you have to like talk about it, obviously, but I'm really telling you, like, I don't see anything wrong with it at all. And my sister coming into our lives by another, a different dad than me, my love for her is no different than my love for my full brother. But step situations are different. I had a step brother for a minute. And I don't talk to him anymore. I don't talk to him in 15 years. But that love wasn't the same. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe it's dependent on situation to situation. Let me get my step. We just never really saw him a lot either. So maybe that's why my sister, like, lived in the same house and we had the same mom. Oh. But to have a baby at, at 22 and have another baby now, like a newborn. But, because I'm not parent, and I feel in my heart that I'm meant to be a mom. But then I go back and forth where I'm like, maybe I'm not. I think, I need to be a mom. I'd be such a good mother. But then, you know, if I'm not, if it's not God's will, maybe I'm not meant to have one. Maybe I'd be a terrible mother. And that's why, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> maybe I don't know how to take care of a baby. How do people know how to take care of babies? That's the question. You get a baby, and it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you do with it? Like, how do you know what to do with it once you bring it home from the hospital? I was like, oh, here you go. You have this baby now to take care of for the rest of your life. <laughs> Good luck. I never had a pet, so I don't know. Mm. But I don't know, man. So many things happening in this world right now. Mm. If I knew how to do those pull things, I'd ask you guys. Best meal. Pizza and pasta or turn your fingers and fries. I feel like there's so much happening on YouTube. Everyone's going to TanaCon. I guess for Tana, she's young. But she's pretty, I mean, she's very influential. I'm out of town for Rich Fun and Hannah Con because it's the same weekend. I won't be in town, but even if it was, I wouldn't do conventions. In general, conventions are just unsafe. <clears throat> Not 
not in like a very tragic way or anything like that, just <clears throat> when there's crowds of people anywhere, sporting events, even Disneyland, like whenever there's crowds of people, like security can only do so much for so many people, you know what I mean? So I think it's great and have fun and we shouldn't live in fear. You should go and do what you know want to do. Just be wary of your surroundings or if you see something weird or suspicious, report it. They just say that in airports, but I don't think they get that warning anymore. But I think that kind of goes without saying, but maybe it doesn't. Always trust your gut instinct. Because I know, like, a big concern of VidCon was, like, people complain about the security. But VidCon, PanaCon, I love Pana and support her. I'd support her more than I would support VidCon. <laughs> Is her security going to be that much better than VidCon's? I doubt it. I mean, there's only so much you can do unless you personally assign a security guard to each person <laughs> and constantly check everybody. I mean, who knows? I don't know, but I'm just saying, go to any of those things or any summer events. Just be careful. Fourth of July. Mm. Was it last Fourth of July? Last Fourth of July. Oh my god! They set up fireworks. I was in my gym late at night. I was by myself. There's a few other people in the gym, but I was by myself in general on 4th of July. Um, every year on 4th of July, it's going to be alone. It's like a really depressing holiday for me. I never get invited to things. I don't know why. <laughs> Just what it is. But I don't mind. It's 4th of July. I don't really mind that much. It's not my favorite holiday in the world. But I was in my gym, and I kind of forgot it was 4th of July by the time I was in the gym because I didn't get a nap. I had done errands. like Just treat it like a regular day. So I'm in the gym, there's like four people, and all of a sudden, we hear pop, 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 and I was like, I literally thought, because I have a huge building, I'm in a huge building, a huge complex, and I'm like, oh my god, there's, and I hate to say this, there's someone, you know, you know, pop, 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 so, I was like, shit, and I was like, so scared, everyone, so, there's like three men in the gym with me, three other guys, they look out the window, and they're like looking, and we're not seeing fireworks. We're hearing, and there's huge windows. We're not seeing. We're seeing, like, nothing. Just, like, smoke in the sky. But not thinking anything of it. I immediately am like, what do I do? Do I stay up here, which is, like, open? Or do I run down somewhere and, like, lock myself in? There's, like, spas and gyms and lockers and stuff. And, like, do I let myself in there and take my chances? Or do I sprint back to my house, which is kind of a long way from my gym? <laughs> and chance it, but that didn't sound like the best idea because hindsight because people flee and they run in straight into the person you know doing whatever but my damn ass was like I don't want to be a sitting duck and waiting I'm gonna just book it and I booked it and I ran um and it was like so terrifying but then I got back and I was like googling what happened and they had set fireworks oh you know what it was it was the day before 4th of July. It was July 3rd. And they were setting off fireworks to, like, practice. I, mean, I didn't tell anybody. It was so scary, though. But. I all these types of things. Like, what's that? Mm-mm-mm. I was gonna bun. I really wanna eat too. But yeah. Like I said though, never let fear stop you. It's good to be like take caution and be safe, but have fun. At the end of the day, I don't want to scare anyone. This is my problem. I, I say things to like help people like look out for themselves and even me look out for myself. I like say things, but Sometimes that puts other like thoughts in their heads that you weren't even thinking about. I'm someone who's like overly cautious. If I ever feel like I'm in a weird situation, I leave. Like I've mean, had it happen a couple times. <clears throat> At 7-Eleven, I have a, like a uncomfortable feeling about something. That one ended up actually being in a bad situation. I actually got interviewed like later because my pink car was in the front. 
from the camera to see it, but I left before the bad thing happened. But the police had came into my house and interviewed me. Um, and that was recently. It was a year ago. And then I had one. When I first moved to LA, I had a Domino's that I carry out. That also ended up being right. Now my suspicion and my instinct has been wrong. <laughs> More times than those right times, but. Here's what I know. And it's not a profiling thing, you know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, maybe it is. I shouldn't even say that's wrong with you. If you're looking at someone, because here's the thing. Every situation I've been in has been a profiling situation, but it's never about, like, race or anything to me. It's a vibe you get. And I've gotten the vibes with white guys, black guys, like, <laughs> I'm an equal discrimination person. But if you get a bad vibe, whatever, race or gender or whatever, don't feel like, oh, I'm, I'm profiling that person. So, you leaving a situation isn't causing harm. If, some, if, you're, if you're uncomfortable in any situation, if I make you uncomfortable, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if you see me and you're like, oh, she makes me uncomfortable, you know, go away from me. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what I'm saying, so. Oh, my gosh, guys. This is so bad. Like, so bad. So I have a Cinnabon. What is in here? Cinnabon. Oh, what a beast this has been. Okay, so Cinnabon. This came from really far away. This was the first thing I ordered, and one of the first things to arrive, actually. And it's the first, it's like really far away from me. There's not one of these close to me. So I'm gonna heat this up. My only question is, how do you heat it up in this little box? Can you put cardboard into a, a microwave? Because I know I'm going to want this heated. Okay, we're going to put it in for like a few seconds. Hopefully it doesn't like melt. Oh, and I need a fork. Blue memento. It's going to take two seconds. Cancel. Okay. Finding a fork now. Oh. My belly. My belly is like not surprisingly over overtly full. I think I I think I had just enough bites and taste of everything. I had too much of the pasta that I can justify to. All right. So I warm it up for oh, it has preheat instructions on the back. Oops. Preheat it later. Oh, reheat later for ooey gooey goodness. Place cinnamon classic roll in microwave. Use the high power. 30 to 40 seconds. Yes. That's what I did. Oh my god, I'm so proud of myself. I didn't even read it. It has the instruction on the back. I didn't even read the back. <laughs> Are we even good? More of this quick time is going to stop. I have to edit so many videos today after I do this because um, my computer's getting full. I need to get one of those Big Macs. I do. A Big Mac from McDonald's. So I need that right now. Um, should we end this with the Cinnabon and then also maybe some YouTubers I've been watching? Because I, there's some great ones the videos coming out that I am excited to go work out to. I love working out to YouTube videos. So let's bring y'all closer. Um, let me go into my YouTube. I think this worked last time. What is coming up that I want to watch? Okay, so. And I get recommended. Here's the thing. Oh my god, I was going to say this too. And this is the unpopular opinion. But lately YouTube has been recommending people I've never heard of before. Like, I don't see my subscriptions, but, but actually, that's not true. I do see my subscriptions. So, I know people are saying that the YouTube's unsubscribing people from their channels, and I know there's there's algorithms, and, man, this mukbang, we're going to get this done. I feel like this is, like, a three-hour-long mukbang for me, anyways, because Daddy Jason just FaceTimed me. He doesn't FaceTime me often when he's busy, so I thought, oh, he might need something, but, all right, guys, so let's go to my YouTube page and see what is the hack. Uh, oh, all I was saying is, like, I like, I remember now because I opened it up. That I like when it, it, it refers me to new people. By the way, I gotta look at myself again so I'm seeing what I just am seeing on the camera. I only like the middle part of the Cinnabon. They used to sell only the middles, but they didn't taste like only the middles because they cooked them differently. Mm. 
How is that? I'm shook how good this is. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. These are even better. Oh my god. I'm just eating these. How many calories do these have? I'm going to eat one of these a day and that's all I eat. Oh my god. <laughs> this is like actually better than I even remember. I haven't had a cinnamon in so long. I used to get these all the time in Illinois, in Rockford, Illinois. Shout out to Cherry Belmont. Mmm. Wow. I'm shook. So I'm watching Lisa Bug right now. Her exposing her relationship video. She's talking about books she loves. She talked about Girl in Pieces and The Couple Next Door, which I have on my Amazon Plus ready to go. Crime Watch Daily. Single mom killed by twin daughters and rage over strict home life. Um, TLC is Lewis rethinking his move from Spain to the USA. And I also watched Ana Fisa going to the green card yelling at her husband, George. Psychic reading. This was recommended for you with the psychic twins. And I don't know who this girl is because I subscribed in the first second. Her name is Brady44. She's super blonde in this and I love it. Is this new? They look like they're in Halloween time. Oh, June 6th. Um, Amanda... Four three one four zero nine. I love her. Oh, I was gonna watch her. My favorites. I'm gonna click on that so I don't forget. Um. Oh, and I was looking up the Rainbow Mickey collection, at Disneyland, because <laughs> it's Gay Pride Month. Um. Which I am proud to be uh, an LGBT. I love Gay Pride Month. I love rainbows and fun things and colorfuls and frays and <laughs> gay days and all that. You guys, this is so good. This is when when people call me fat and say, I have some self-control. I want to be, you have a cinnamon roll. Have you had a cinnamon bun lately? Because if you had, you'd be a lot happier and you wouldn't be complaining about what I'm putting in my body. Honestly. Oh my God, you guys. I touched about this a little bit and like a, I think it was Jason's vlog and like even on my video but I rented this space from this person and they were nice but oh. I think this person watch, watching me eat this right now I'm watching this it was like a fitness family they had their own fitness products and <laughs> Even though she wasn't mean to be insulting. She's like, you know, a lot of people that are your size don't look good. Or a lot of people, you shake you're beautiful the way you are. But, it's like, you're lucky that you're pretty at that size. And that you hold your weight well and like, stuff like that. And I was like, it's really the most insulting thing. I'm going to do like a whole rant video because like that, oh my god, yesterday was like a day, you guys. I couldn't get away from people just telling me like how disgusting I eat. As if, like, I don't know that I eat not the best, to put it lightly. I don't have a great diet. I'm not an idiot. People look at me like I'm actually like a slow person. I feel when they talk to me about it. But to say, like, you know, I know you're like the McDonald's girl. They kept saying that, too. We know you're like a fast food kind of girl, but... Yeah. I mean, we got to the day I die. The fork in the end zone. Wow. Wow. Mm. Life needs frosting. The money you get me. Holy cow. I swear to God, I want that for breakfast every day. I'll never eat another thing in my life. I am sure being skinny is cute and funny, y'all, but we got the cinnamon. Like, that ain't. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God, it got so late. 
and so much to do today. And I just looked at the clock and I was like, oh, okay. Whoa, guys, what a month thing this was. I don't even know how long this was. I guess I'll be sure. I have no idea. Um, Diet Coke, the way it burns your throat, it's so good. I mean, that's like slam poetry right there. Oh, I could go to Food Combo, but I have to add it. I have so much. Oh, I just got frosting literally everywhere. I got a lot I got to do. I can from my house. I forgot to do stuff. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching my videos. And until next time. Oh, Chris and Angel's on tour. <laughs> They're gonna check him out. I love Chris Angel. Always have, always will. Shout out to Chris Angel. Well, if I just shout out Chris Angel with all my videos, he's amazing. I DM'd him or DM'd me back the other day because I told him the story. We're gonna shoot something together soon. I thought, okay, you let me know. First plane out to Vegas. Or you can come here and perform magic in my house. He's such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. I love people who are nice guys. I was talking to someone the other day about Quentin Tarantino and they're asking questions about it because I knew him like back in the day and I was like oh my god he's like literally the nicest like the nicest like celebrity I hate the term but like they are celebrities I guess I've ever met and like Chris Angel right up there Eminem like those are like three guys and like freaking I'm trying to think of girls that are like super nice Pamela Anderson was a little cold when I met her Susan Summer's cold Britney Spears a robot <laughs> I don't know I try and be, like, extra personable to people that, especially when they come, like, I have, I have a live show coming up, but especially when they come to something, like, I had a book signing a few years ago, especially when they come out and, like, purchase a book and doing something to support me, like, in person, it's not just, like, a random person on the street, and a random person on the street who knows me, I'm still, like, I'm gonna give this person my overt Trisha, like, love because I'm so grateful for this person, but especially when they come to, like, a book signing and buy a book and, like, or a show, or whatever, and they buy a ticket and they pay to meet you, like, from a book signing, I just, I just wanted to, like, talk for hours with everyone. I kept in touch with so many people from my Toronto book signing to this day because I'm just like, oh, my God, that, that was, like, four years ago. And you guys were amazing. I had a meetup in New York Times Square, and I was still friends with those people for a long time. And I, like, even a couple people from there I would have dinner with or I would talk to or, like, be in communication with because it's, like, I'm so grateful. So, um, like I said, not everyone's like that. And I get not everyone needs to be like that either. I'm in a different realm. I'm in YouTube and social media. And also, everyone's just different at the end of the day. You know, people have lives and stuff like that. I don't. <laughs> um, but as far as, like I said, like as far as somebody's goes, like Quentin Tarantino's so freaking nice. Um, I mean, I'm so freaking nice. And Chris Angel's so freaking nice. And none of those people I have slept with. So, in fact, the people I have slept with that were like celebrities, like not so nice people to um, their fans, if you will. But they're always super sweet and super nice to me. And um, Chris Angel's always just supportive. And I love him. And it's so crazy because to me, he's like a really big deal. Um, I'm so full, you guys. All right. Oh, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I need to get work done. I love you guys. <laughs> the cough is back. Jason was checking in on me. He said my cough was. And I was like, you know what? It's better today. I feel completely fine. So I'm going to actually try and go work out too. And I have to send my mom back. She doesn't need to. I love you guys. I'm flexing my kisses. More professionals. Bye, guys.